What's up guys, we got a really killer deal for you guys today. This is the Garvey Mix and Match Kit featuring Steve Garvey Ink, uh, Art Primo Drip Mop, uh, a Toxic Shocker, a Big Squeeze, and of course, a Press and Go uh, refillable marker. Now this is a $30 deal for only $11.99, so it's a significant savings. I mean, we're, we're getting really beat up on this one, I have to say, uh, but it is a great deal for you guys to so take advantage of it today. It's a one day special, and this is a really great kit because it, it gets you on your feet to try out a whole bunch of different stuff. So, you know, of course we have the Spring Fever ink right here, which is very mixable with the Steve Garvey. With the purple, you can make a really killer combination with the two. Uh, if you want to make a stainer, you can run the Steve Garvey by itself. Um, you know, you can mix and match all kinds of stuff. So why don't we go ahead and check it out? Maybe we should take her back. I'm sorry, All right, guys, let's go ahead and start mixing some stuff up so you guys can check it out. Uh, up first will be the big squeeze, because I think that's really the hitter right here. So, uh, you know, you could run the Garvey by itself. Now, it is a dye-type ink, so it will, it will eventually fade. Uh, but the advantage of these dye-type inks is it allows you to get more stainability. And if you mix it with your... <laughs> Can I help you? <laughs> yeah, let's just let her off. Can I help you? All right, let's just let her off. There you go, boy. All right, so we're experiencing the terrible twos right now. So, all right, so let's go ahead and try it out one more time. So, uh, the beauty of these type of dye inks is you can mix and match with your paint type inks and get more flow, more more stainability, and also a tone adjustment to whatever it is you're trying to do. So, I'm going to go ahead and put some of this uh, some of this ink in this mop right here, and uh, this is just some bulk spring fever. Biscuit, biscuit, what are you doing? Okay, and I think. Uh, a 50-50 mix might be too much, so we'll do like a, I'm sorry, my dog is just really excited right now. Uh, we're gonna do like a 75% spring fever in here. And then we'll do about a quarter of the Steve Garvey, and that should be a great combination to get you that nice flow and a nice little shift of the color. <laughs> Let me grab her real quick. <laughs> hey, what is your deal today? Why are you, why are you being so naughty? What's going on with you? So anyways, Biscuits in Doggy Jail, she takes after her dad, what can I say? So we're going to go ahead and add some of the Steve Garvey in here, and I think we we're doing a 75 to 25 mix, roughly. You know, this isn't exact science here. Uh, it's just a benchmark to kind of give you an idea of what we're going to do. And uh, let me just kind of take a look in there, let's add a little bit more. Again, this is a stainer, a stainer and flow agent. Now these mop inks will work really good on their own. Uh, but you know, sometimes you just want a, a little bit more juice, a little bit more flow, and a little bit more drip. Now what I really like about these Steve Garvey bottles is these are a new one, and they have, as you can see, a built-in applicator, which is very handy. Definitely comes in handy. So let's go ahead and uh, put the, the nib on this thing. The nib. One time a kid hit me up. He was asking about nips. He meant to say nibs. <laughs> Thought it was really funny. He's like, hey, can I put the nib on it? Like it's a nib, homie. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and juice this one up. Oh yeah, look at that. So it's made a much more rich color of blue. Uh, the purple added to it is a little bit darker, which is very nice. Uh, but it should give you a little bit more flow and a little bit more stain. So let's go check it out. Now first, we're gonna test it on what I call our grilled wall. This is gonna simulate like a like a bar bathroom or a place like a dumpster that's just covered in tags. So we're never gonna buff this. We're just gonna leave it as is and we'll, we'll test out how markers and ink work on this type of surface. Uh, I just did these tags recently, so I think they're still kind of wet, but that's okay. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do a quick little squeeze here. All right, that's very nice. All right, up first is Raya. Give it a little bit more squeeze here, just for the effect. All right. <laughs> now this is an interesting one because this is a speed flow ink behind here and this, this will bleed through pretty much anything. So as you can see here, the speed flow is bleeding through on its own as well too. So it's, it's a little bit of a battle between the inks. Um, since this is mostly paint ink, uh, you're gonna run into that. Now if this was a black, a black paint ink may be a little bit different. Nevertheless, very interesting. But as you can see, it's very flowy, uh, writes very nice. I'm a fan. 
Look at that. That's a lot of fun. Uh, okay, who else is up here? We got Rock ROC. Good. Now, if we want to get even more flow from this, we could add a little bit more Steve Garvey to it, and I think it would get it, you know, even more drippy. But as you can see already, we're getting a ton of drips. Um, the squeezy is giving you that nice kind of fat flow. It almost looks like a, a spray paint can, really. It's very, it's very, very thick. Okay, guys, so this is our other surface. This is basically simulating like a dumpster or an electrical box or any type of municipal surface that, you know, gets regularly buffed. So it's got that kind of heavy duty green paint on it. Although the color may change depending on what type of oops paint I get, but it's always gonna be that kind of industrial, like heavy gloss type of material. Um, you know, we wanna keep this as realistic as possible with multiple different types of surfaces. And I think you guys would appreciate that. So um, as you could imagine on this type of surface, you're gonna get the best of everything because it's a nice, uh, smooth, and ready to be violated place. <laughs> oh man, that's really nice. Now, because of the staining ability, if they go to buff it, uh, they're gonna have a little bit of a hard time. Now, keep in mind, the buff man has a lot of tools available to himself, so he'll eventually win. Uh, but you know, give him a little bit of work. Keep him employed. Uh, when you're out there doing graffiti, you're doing your part, giving people work. Good, honest work, buff man. Uh, okay, so let's see here. Let's do a score. And we'll do one more with this here just to kind of play around and I'll squeeze a little bit more with it right there. Just give it a little bit more juicy squeeze. I really like this color combination. It looks really good. It's very rich, it's very vibrant, and you're really catching the purple of the stainer. Um, not bad, not bad at all. And I wanna use the Spring Fever ink by itself. Now, obviously we have the Steve Garvey here, but you know we wanna see what it looks like without it being mixed, because it is a mix and match kit. And, and I, know, I know this ink isn't what you're getting here, but it's just an example of Spring Fever ink. That way I don't have to you know, open up the mop and you know, adulterate it, so I can you know, give you an opportunity to show you what it's like normally. Um, Now, I really enjoy the reds. Now, reds don't cover or hide as good as other colors, uh, but this particular one is very vibrant. It's very rich. Of course, you're getting a lot of drips with it, which is really nice. Gotta like that. And I'm giving it a little bit of a squeeze as I write with it here, of course. Look how it's going over the blue right there. It's starting to mix together. Very cool stuff. Now here's some examples of some stuff I did with the uh, burner marker the other day. And as you can see, it's got a really nice chisel, a very good effect. I'm a big fan of this marker. Um, very cool. Uh, let's see. All right, so as you can see, very vibrant, very rich, uh, very similar to, I would say, like a Crank K60. But obviously it's our own formula, it's a little bit different. Uh, but if you've used those, you'll be very familiar with these types of inks. What about the Steve Garvey by itself? Now this isn't a common thing that people do. I mean, they do do it. I said doo-doo. Uh, they do do it um, in certain circumstances where you want to have something that bleeds through, for example, on the insides of transit. So if you're in Europe or a place like that, you know, a lot of these guys are doing a lot of stainer stuff inside the trains and buses and stuff like that, because well, they're, they're just frankly hoodlums. <laughs> or, you know, if you're a fine artist, you're looking for something a little bit different, you know, you might want, you might want to rock some of this dye. I mean, you could even use this for calligraphy if you wanted to. I'm not a calligraphy person. It's not really my bag. Just more of a, a dirty tagger myself that kind of grew up. Oh shit, nope, there we go. Look at that, it wouldn't be a GR video if I didn't make a mess, right? Okay, that's my, that's my only beef with this particular marker is it's opaque and you can't see how you're filling it. Uh, and I think the, the thing is we can only get them like this, they don't come in clear. So it's just something you kind of have to deal with. Now, the toxic marker, as, the, as it is named, 
is a very hard marker. It's not squeezable like the drip mop. You know, this is a very squeezable mop. Same thing with the big squeeze. So this type of marker is best suited for dye type inks anyways, because it's, it's very difficult to squeeze. Now, that doesn't mean you can't put paint in it. I've seen people do it. And some people actually like it for paint because you know, not everyone likes drips. Some people just want a simple clean hand. And, and I totally get that. You know, that's the thing about this is it's everyone can do whatever they want. There's not one rule. You know what I mean? You can, you can make, you can make it whatever you want it to be, but let's go ahead and check out the dye here and uh, make sure we're getting some flow here. So as you can see, it's a dark purple, very much like Garvey ink, uh, but it's our own formulation. It's a little bit different, but similar in a way. Now on smooth surfaces like this, it's probably not the best use for it. So unless it's like a plexiglass surface that's been kind of buffed a bunch of times, it gets kind of cloudy. This would work really good on that because it'll really stain into it. But on fresh glass, uh, you'd probably be wasting your time. But let's just do it for the sake of just showing you um, what it looks like. So on a smooth surface like this, the dye ink, um, it doesn't really have anything to grab onto. You know, it can't, it's, it's, it's a bleeding type ink, you know, so it needs a, something to stick into like, like a painted surface or some wood or something like that. So on here, it's just gonna kind of spread out until it ev eventually the solvents dry off. And that's kind of what you're seeing right here. So I wouldn't recommend using it on glass, but maybe on somewhere over here, if I can reach up here, it's gonna work really good. Now, if, you, if this is like, you know, for example, like, you know, a covered doorway in an alley or something like that, uh, it's gonna work excellent because it's not gonna get a lot of direct sunlight. And if they buff over it, it's most likely just gonna bleed right through, especially if they're not a professional buffer. And of course, uh, interior transit, things like that, you're gonna get some very good staining ability. You know, usually they'll use a chemical to remove it and you know, you'll still see a bit of a ghost of what was there before. And that's why I really like this stuff. This is just all theoretical stuff. So keep that in mind. Uh, <laughs> but I really do enjoy the way it writes. You know, for me, I just like the markers. I like to try different stuff and I just like to talk about it. You know, it's, it's really what it is. Okay, so there you go. So that is a Steve Garvey by itself. You know, we can rock it on this other surface here too. I think this stuff is still too wet over here. So it may not be the best use for it right now. I, I can try and sneak it in here. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna mix in with what's there already. So as you can see, it's picking up the wet paint that's underneath it. Now the Spring Fever ink usually takes I don't know prob probably like a good hour to fully dry, uh, depending on the weather, of course. So we're probably not going to be able to get proper use on this surface. Another thing you can do is maybe, uh, for example, like try it on a, a, a surface like this wood here. Now this is very porous and there's certain circumstances where you try like using a dye ink on wood, it's just gonna bleed right into the surface. So why don't I fill this up with a little bit more ink because I think it's a little low. I'll just pull this off right here real quick. Once we get this whole place dialed in, I think we're gonna be able to do a lot of really cool stuff. I wanna get like a garbage can, uh, maybe like an old vintage phone booth, Oh man, if we can get a mailbox, that would be super sweet. Let's do a quick test here. So again, on, on porous surfaces, dye inks really shine because they just bleed right into it. That's not going anywhere. You have to sand down below the surface to remove that. I'm not recommending people do this, by the way. I'm just talking about what you can do with it. <laughs> Anyways. Creatively, you could find a lot of outlets for yourself with this. You know, I could see like a fine artist doing this and you know, you could do like a wood carving kind of thing with it or something like that. Um, you know, you just never know. Possibilities are endless. Look how it bleeds through right there. No drips, no drips on the wood. It's going straight inside. Very cool stuff. So let's finish it up with a happy face right here. probably going to make a mess. Oh, of course. Wah, wah, wah. 
Now, if you're unfamiliar with these, these are a lot of fun. They're actually a metal tip like a, uh, what are these called? A uh, correction marker. And a little correction ink marker here. Just pour this in here. Ah, just make a mess. <laughs> The art is the mess. Okay. Shake. All right, it's right here. Which you gotta be really careful with these because they are very delicate because they're very small. But they work really good. So you can you can add uh, whatever type of ink or paint inside of it. You don't you don't have to add dye to this. We're just doing it because that's the video. In fact, you probably would be better to just use paint by itself because these drip a lot. They drip a ton. Nevertheless, excellent creative potential right there as well, too. All right. Okay guys, we had a lot of fun checking them out and I, I have to say it, even though we've made a huge mess, uh, we've learned a lot, we've tried a bunch of different things, done a bunch of different combos with it. And I gotta say, this is a great kit, a killer deal and I think you guys will really dig it. Uh, what did I say it was, $11.99, over $30 value? Ter terrific deal. And there's so much you can do with this little kit right here. So anyways, thank you very much guys. I think this is not our last Chrome week, but it's getting there. We've got a lot of great stuff to come too. So keep yourself tuned and uh, you know, check out the channel, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and be sure to hit up arcprimo.com for the Chrome week because, uh, well, we're just killing it. So anyways, thank you very much, guys. Talk to you later.